here with Martin, who's the Provost of Manukau Institute of Technology here in New Zealand. And you missed a really great keynote at the conference about AI. And I think all of us were partly amazed, partly <laughs> afraid <laughs> about what the future holds for us in regards to artificial intelligence and the future of work. So when we're preparing our students for this ever-changing, unknown, uncertain future, what sort of things do you need? Do you think we need to focus on to help get our students ready for this sure, uncertainty? Sure, sure. Kia ora, Amanda. Well, first of all, don't be afraid, uh, but be informed. Uh, it's a topic that is upon us. Uh, it's happening now. The rollout is speeding up. So uh, number one is start talking about it. Start making sure that people uh, understand a little bit about what AI is. We don't all have to be data scientists uh, to understand exactly how it works. Uh, but we do need to learn about the way that it is designed and can impact on our lives. So, uh, what I think our students uh, uh, need assistance with is first of all having regular conversations about how AI impacts on human lives. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of uh, technological understanding, um, both in terms of general uh, technological literacy uh, more and more jobs are going to require more and more uh, technical literacy. Uh, but also, um, for AI specifically, understanding the way that AI works, the way that AI arrives at conclusions and uses those conclusions to deliver up services. We all know about Siri. Yes. We've probably all talked to Siri uh, or, or Amazon's Alexa, Alexa or things yeah, like that. Alexa, yeah, or something similar. <laughs> right. Uh, what we probably don't stop to think about is where do the answers come from? How are those answers formulated? What are the biases inherent in those answers? Like I say, you don't need to be a data scientist to understand that. I think most people have probably interacted with a chatbot at some point in time and not even realised that they were right. interacting with a right, chatbot. Right, right, whether they knew it or not. And you know, there's chatbots and there's chatbots. You know, some of them are quite simplistic. They just do keyword searches and give you pre-rehearsed answers to a question that contains a keyword. But others that use natural language programming are far more sophisticated, will draw upon far more data to give you a more, if you like, uh, human type response. And it just helps to understand what the basis of those responses are and what the limitations to them are. Mm. And not to over worry or over interpret if the answer we get from an AI agent makes us a little anxious. You know, there's always a human that we can talk to for clarification. <laughs> I think one of the things you said was it's really interesting because AI you know, it does get programmed by us with all of right. our biases and understanding that I think is really, really critical to the future. And, and even when I talk to my colleagues about the future of work and how do we integrate AI, the question is a lot of the fear comes from the uncertainty of what we don't know. Right. Um, so I guess finding an expert is right. probably one of the best things that academics can do to try and figure right. this out because I guess you're right nobody expects us to be data scientists right. but we do need to yeah. figure out where to reach out for help I think is one of the hard things. The, the fear comes from the Terminator. <laughs> Alright that's everybody's worst fear. The, this whole idea that if AI ever really becomes self-aware it will conclude that humans are illogical, that they're dangerous and therefore they have to go. That's the fear. Um, I was waiting for you to make a Westworld reference, actually. Ah, well, yes. <laughs> Westworld did, in fact, take it to a, 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 another level. Another level, um, yes. There's only so many sci-fi movies I could reference in my, in my speech. The thing is, uh, those types of fears do play on the human psyche, and we need to calm that right down. And the best way to calm that right down is with information, with knowledge about how it really works, where it's really at, but recognising that the impact is growing. Uh, and the best way we can always uh, deal with that is to prepare for it well with, with good education. The other thing that's worth understanding is the importance of human to human interaction. Uh, so AI is not going to replace the importance of the nuances of human That's why we come to conferences, right? We right? could, we could we sit home and other. do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could sure. have a web conference, but it's not the same as being here and... There's so much more detail that you can get and unpick and unpack and, you know, when we're dealing with students and, and learning from each other at conferences how to deal with students, it's often the entirely random thing that uh, will benefit a student that AI won't think of. So, for example, if a student is uh, chatting to a, a chatbot about what career they should go into, that chatbot 
is going to take the information that you give them, it's going to factor in your gender and your age and your background and what you think you're interested in, and it will look at all the data it's got around what answers proved optimal for everyone that met your criteria, and it will give that to you. And that's kind of helpful, but it just locks in the status quo. Mm. A human being might say, oh, I can see you're really interested in accounting, and you, your dad was an accountant, and you're good with numbers, um, but I can't help but notice the way you dress. You look like you're a creative person. You know, just out of curiosity, have you thought about the arts? <laughs> An AI uh, agent probably won't do that, mm. and it might just be the question that makes the students go, I've always wanted someone to, you know, trigger that. Fantastic. That, that's actually quite funny because most of my colleagues when they first meet me at university and at events don't believe I'm an accountant. I think, <laughs> surely you must be in arts or something else or right. social sciences, but I think that uh, pigeonholing people right. really limits. Well, and I just did that, in fact, in my example, <laughs> by implying that accountants couldn't be creative. Of course, that's not what I was meaning to do. Creative accounting. Oh, well, that's something else altogether. You're a problem, <laughs> so you've dealt with budgets, you know what that's about. Well, I want to thank Martin for his time. Um, if you have a question about AI, Pop it in the comments, I'll make sure that he gets it and I grab some answers for you. But I want to thank you. And uh, for everybody who missed out on STARS this year, come along to STARS next year for a really great experience. It's a great conference.